Okay, if you're wondering why the title of this video includes a with A and B section, it's not because I'm being paid by AMD, that's not the case at all, this video is not even sponsored, it's because I plan on releasing a similar video sculpted around Intel in the near future. Just a little disclaimer there because, well, the comment section. Anyway, so the red team's definitely been, uh, behind, and it might not appear that way to the average consumer, right? Ryzen's been putting a huge dent into Intel's grasp of the consumer market. Prices are extremely competitive, motherboards are cheap, and we have mainstream eight core CPUs on both sides due in large part to AMD 7 series endeavors. I'm talking about the 1700, the 2700, those CPUs. But elsewhere in the industry, AMD still has quite the ground to make up, and that's probably an understatement. According to the register, AMD's server market share only recently touched 1%. It hasn't been anywhere close to that for the past five or so years. Intel's goal is to keep it below 10% once Epic fully saturates. So again, AMD's got quite a ways to go. And don't get me started on the graphics card side of things. The Radeon division struggled to offer anything viable following Nvidia's Pascal launch, and I'm using that as a standard because Turing honestly outpriced much of its potential audience. Vegas 64 and 56 were overhyped, undersupplied, extremely expensive thanks to the mining craze. Assuming you could find one, they're much cheaper now, but we still have nothing viable on the red team to solely compete with the 1080 Ti, ignoring Turing for now again, which is overpriced in its own right. By the way, this isn't me harping on AMD, that's not the point of this video. I want healthy competition and AMD brings that to the doorsteps of both Intel and Nvidia, but the competition could still be better. They aren't forcing either competitor to rapidly innovate again ignoring Turing, whose technology hasn't fully manifested and likely won't for several years. That's a totally different topic, I have videos on that subject. And that's what AMD's been seeking to change. A little bit of it was highlighted in today's event. Firstly, AMD recapped its epic advancements, particularly its cloud computing and data center specialties. Hyping the world's first seven nanometer data center CPU, Epic, now dubbed Rome or the Rome architecture, will bring advanced security features and a heavily boosted IPC figure. Fabrication will be handled by TSMC, we already knew that. And the architecture is expected to have a lower power draw overall, thanks to much smaller transistors that consume significantly less power. Doubled core density and improved pipeline, the list goes on. The CPUs actually incorporate multiple dyes per se, all of which are tied together with an improved infinity fabric. Keep in mind that these are server CPUs though that we're talking about. This is our first foot in the door, if you will, though, about seven nanometer architecture. So this stuff looks promising, but of course it's supposed to look promising at these events. The point is to build hype after all. So as always, take everything you hear with a grain of salt, especially when it comes to extrapolating these announcements into consumer grade seven nanometer launches, which we expect will roll out around mid 2019. For now, we've got a great 12 nanometer platform to deal with, and it's still difficult to recommend lower end Intel equivalents, to be completely honest here, because the value is so strong Strong on the red team, especially with the lower end chips. In general, what I preach is if you want the best for gaming, undeniably Intel is your better buy. But if you're more concerned with your budget or plan to run multiple programs simultaneously, AMD is probably the better way to go. And I think that's a fair representation. I mean, I'm not trying to appease either side here. I just think that it, it's accurate from the sense of the two companies uh, on a consumer perspective, right at this point in time, have to compete. They have to have competitive advantages. And I think those are the advantages, at least from the consumer's perspective when it comes to both Intel and AMD. And again, we didn't see a huge IPC jump with second gen Ryzen architecture, but we did see memory support and XMP improvements, steadier voltage tolerances and higher frequencies across the board. Things get very stubborn past roughly 4.2 gigahertz, and that's something we hope will change with Zen 2, the real Zen 2. But for now, you can get a solid four or six core multi-threaded CPU from AMD for well under 200 bucks. That's something Intel cannot say, and it's why so many consumers are wholly backing them. As for my take, the R5 2600 in particular remains the best CPU you can buy for about 160 US dollars. That's an insane deal. Put it this way, if your computer budget revolves around $1,000 or less, the 2600 is the CPU for you, period. The one caveat being if you only game, at which point I would recommend a locked i7 or an unlocked i5. But for AMD, you could pair it with a $100 B450 motherboard, $150 basket of DDR4, a $50 PSU, $50 case, $100 bucks in storage drives, and you've still got roughly $400 for a killer graphics card. Again, all within that $1,000 budget. 
and that's going to give you something around a GTX 1080 or a 1070, depending on whether or not you choose to buy used or new. I built a system just like this right here. The graphics card I chose was a GTX 1080, which I actually bought used, and if you buy used, you might be able to fit two of these in SLI, or throw in a single GTX 1080 Ti, or an RTX 2070, maybe. If, you, if you're lucky, maybe you wait till Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you see some great deals in the RTX cards. Don't expect it, and it's going to be very difficult to fit any of the Turing cards at this point into a $1,000 budget. You might be able to pull it off if you do let me know and, and let me know how you did it, but you'd probably have to make some compromises. But let's assume you went with the GTX 1080 like I did here. You'll have a killer system ready for 1080p, 1440p, and even lighter 4K gaming. You'll have a CPU capable of driving higher refresh rates, even with the stock cooler in use, and a GPU capable of handling some crispy in-game settings, which of course matters when you start bumping your resolution. You don't want to see all those jaggies thanks to the extra pixels on your screen especially if the screen is large. I've got benchmarks of this exact config, by the way, on the channel. You can check them out via the link below or the card up top. But if you had any doubt about the viability of this combination, just check out this GTA 5 benchmark. The game is beautifully leveraged. Both the CPU and GPU are at work here, and we're able to sustain 100 FPS in 1440p with high settings across the board and a dose of anti-aliasing to boot. So if you'd like to build a system similar to this one, you can check out the links below and support us in the process. We do appreciate it. I want to know what you guys think about my CPU of choice for AMD and uh, the graphics card I chose to pair it with. A lot of people are asking me whether or not an R5 2600 will bottleneck a GTX 1080 or an RTX 2080. And the answer to that is under most circumstances, no, it will not. If you watch your CPU usage, most games are going to be anywhere between two to four thread dependent, meaning that your CPU is just it's not going to be at fault, there's not much it can do because you don't have the ability to overclock it much more. If you want to call that a bottleneck, sure, fine, but I'd take that any day of the week over a locked i5 for the same price, especially if I'm streaming in the process. That's, again, just my take. I don't expect all, everyone to agree with me there, uh, but I wanted to close this with a bit of an opinion because this is basically opinionated apart from the facts that I presented earlier in the video. Now, what do you think about my build? If you want to, again, build one similar, check out the links below. Leave a like if you'd like this video, that would be cool. If you wanted to do that. Dislike it if you feel complete opposite or if you hate everything about life and click the red subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. I almost said my name. This is Greg Salazar. Thanks for learning with us.